It's 1790. The Constitution, the original Constitution, has been adopted by most of the states. The First Amendment, where religious liberty is guaranteed, that's still not adopted. That's not going to happen until 1791. Um, and the state of Rhode Island, a very small state, has still not signed on to the Constitution. George Washington wants the Constitution to be unanimous. In his view, if everyone accepts it, then everyone uh, will feel bound by it, even though it's already passed, three quarters of the states accepted it. He wanted it to be unanimous. He made it clear that if Rhode Island signed on, he and a, a whole uh, entourage of uh, important statesmen like Thomas Jefferson would visit Rhode Island. Rhode Island finally votes to approve the Constitution, and uh, as soon as uh, the American Congress ends its session in the summer, George Washington has to fulfill his promise. He comes and makes a state visit to Rhode Island, uh, and he comes to Newport. Newport uh, had a significant Jewish community. It had a beautiful synagogue designed by the great colonial architect Peter Harrison, what we know as the Turo Synagogue, a 19th century name. Uh, that synagogue bespeaks the importance of the community when that synagogue was built in 1763. Um, and so when George Washington arrives, um, there are letters read out to him by different communities. The different Christian communities read him a letter, the Masons read him a letter, and the Jewish community reads a letter, an address as they call it, to George Washington. And it is a very important document, um, and George Washington uh, will take that document, and later that month, after he returns to New York, he will write a very important response um, uh, to that document. The most important question that the Jewish community wanted to know was, Will all of these guarantees of uh, citizenship and liberty of conscience and so on, will they really apply to Jews? Jews knew that there were many documents written by governments that uh, turned out um, and not really to be worth the paper they were written on. They wanted to hear it right from the mouth of the president. And what was critical to them, I think, was simply knowing that they would be citizens. After all, in uh, many colonies, Jews had not had full rights of citizenship, uh, didn't have imme uh, liberty of conscience, and, uh, and in most of the world. Uh, Jews in the 1790s did not have liberty of conscience and immunities of citizenship. Indeed, it's in the 1790s when most of uh, the Jews of uh, Russia were being reduced to what we call the Pale of Settlement by Catherine the Great, l greatly limiting uh, their uh, liberties and immunities. So that's what they were interested in. Um, and they invent the phrase, to bigotry, no sanction, to persecution, no assistance. But amazingly, George Washington gives them more than they even asked for. They wanted to be reassured about citizenship and liberty of conscience. He says, absolutely, it applies. Um, they're interested in to bigotry, no sanction, to persecution, no assistance. He gives them that phrase. But then he says something else. He says that in America, it is not just toleration, but that indeed religious liberty is an inheritance 
inherent natural right. That is an amazing statement, not found really anywhere in the world uh, at that point. Uh, even in the 19th century, when Jews are emancipated in Europe, it's usually a kind of quid pro quo. We'll give you emancipation. We assume you change. If you don't change or we don't like the way you change, we can take away your emancipation. But inherent natural rights cannot be taken away. They're inherent natural rights. This notion that religious liberty is an inherent natural right, that Jews had the same religious liberty, the same right of religious liberty as every American, and nobody could take it away, was a truly revolutionary development, and explains, I think, why this letter uh, has such great significance, not just to Jews, but actually to all Americans. Every time religious liberty is curtailed in one way or another, one finds that George Washington's letter to the Jews of Newport is recalled anew uh, because uh, the promise set forth in this state document uh, is, is so central uh, to what makes America distinctive uh, for Jews.